Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to our That's No Moon Base, the series in which we build a massive moon base on the surface of the moon, or on the surface of no moon, depending on what bugs we encounter. And I'm using viewer submitted utilities to do this. In today's episode, we shall start off first by recapping the base so far. So, what are. Well, the constituent parts. Let's go through the parts. We have a hangar, we have a couple of rovers, we have this crashed sky frame, which we're not going to do anything about currently, and we have living quarters, and of course a beacon right there in the centre. The hangar itself isn't working currently, so we need to swap that out for something in the next episode. We need to fix the sky crane in the next episode, and in this episode, we're going to launch some Kerbals. Doesn't sound like a priority. Here we have the Kerbal Howitzer Mark III, submitted by Wimex84. Thank you very much for this utility. See what I did there? See it? Yeah, no. Yes, this is a pretty, pretty nice ship. The main reason I chose this over the other ones was the mobility of it, the different modes and the uh, the flexibility, I suppose. Also, that's hilarious, the uh, the launch pad thing. It's just like, it will fly away and self-destruct, hopefully. And the aerospike. Now, I'm thinking I may have ha wanted to use a stronger uh, rocket than the aerospike, but the aerospike is pretty damn efficient. And yeah, there, this, this general this module, all in all, is pretty convenient, and it works fairly well. Also, we think. Let us check. Let us actually see, yeah? Maybe we should actually test to see if it works, rather than just sending there and sending it there and hoping. So, we positioned the guy on the pad. I said I wanted simplicity and reliability, so, you know, every day-to-day -day commute. And this is pretty much what that provided. So, we'll delete some random parts, we'll get this thing onto the pad. We shall switch to our craft after changing the settings once more. The setting on there is pretty nice, uh, the different amounts as he falls over. And I think we are ready to test. So, we're going to test how far this thing can fire a Kerbal. Three, two, one. And that is pretty far. Now, of course, you may be thinking, but. But only only three kilometers or so. I mean, that's rubbish. On the moon, we're going to need a lot more than that. Bounce. <laughs> we're going to need a lot more than that. Well, the moon's gravity is quite low. It's got no atmosphere. And all the things adding up. I think we're going to do well enough. So I'm also testing the... Uh, the docking ports. They weren't aligned properly. I had to move it slightly. It took about five minutes, so it wasn't any big deal, but I did have to move them slightly. Um, I don't know whether it just wasn't tested, because a lot of people seem to not be testing it, which makes me think there may just be some slight differences when the crafts are moved over. I don't know. But every single docking port so far, apart from ones which are in the actual position, which is, uh, it is determined by a standard fuel tank with two rovers on the side and the docking port on the end of the fuel tank. That height determined by that. Everyone seems to get it just slightly wrong. And how slightly wrong it seems to be is very, very, it, it's very similar in everyone's submissions. So it's making me think that maybe there's some external factor that's changing the height off the ground. But at any rate, it's not important. What is important is that the ship seems to work as intended with one slight tweak. And now we can build our launch stage. Yes, we can. Why is this bit of the video not sped up? It should be. It should be, actually. On my editor, it says it is sped up. Why is it only running at regular speed? Listen to the music. The music, the music is sped up. This video is actually sped up. I must have been working incredibly slow. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know for what reason, but uh, I guess I was just working slowly. So, okay. This is me building it. Harv, why you no do asparagus staging? Because, because I, I could say, I could say that I was testing how well asparagus really helps. In all honesty, I just don't care. 
it's far quicker for me to, uh, it's far quicker to do non-asparagus staging. And it's easier to set up the staging for, it's more reliable. The lack of efficiency isn't that big an issue. I mean, I know this thing weighs in at about 17 tons or so, and I know this this launcher, even with decreased fuel efficiency, can definitely lift that onto the, surf the surface of the moon, so it's not a problem, to be honest. The uh, the final landing stage we have directly underneath the rover is quite interesting. I, I messed about quite a lot with that to uh, get what I wanted. And we'll see how well that works when the time comes. <clears throat> so, 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 now we can uh, kick things into a slightly higher gear, launch, or go onto the launch pad at least, and we can get ready to take our rover, our, it's not really a rover is it, it's more of a building, I mean I say I chose it because it was mobile, but that's be mainly because I like the idea of flexibility. Also, landing it not where you need it and then being able to drive it where you need it is a bit easier than having to land it dead on where it's supposed to be. Because of course, if this thing is going to be launching Kerbals into orbit, we want it to be pointing directly towards 90 degrees and uh, having that just immediately from landing, mm, that's kind of stretching in terms of reliability. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter and we go forth with our uh, lack of asparagus staging and uh, four fuel tanks, which shall all be dropped now. And we're left with this one single stack. The I do actually notice the fuel efficiency difference. It is definitely a noticeable change. But also that could just be the fact that I went full throttle and I didn't care about throttling either. Because again, I know I've got the fuel required to actually do this. And uh, yes, that is all fine. <laughs> Ah, right. So we detach our first stage, and that is all well and good. Usually, I, you can't put that down to efficiency necessarily, but usually that stage would be would have taken us to the moon already. So you can see the difference by there. Or, or can you? Because we do actually have another two stages, or one more stage than we would usually have at this point, because we have our current intermediate stage in the form of a uh, one tank and a Rockamax Poodle engine. And then th the final landing stage is half a tank and a Rockamax Poodle engine. Why? Because. Because it seemed pretty suitable at the time, is because. We warp down to our periapsis, doing a standard moon transfer, burn towards retrograde in order to de. de. what's it called? Orbital insertion, I believe. Get into our orbital insertion. Notice that uh, when we are pointing upside down, the rover is pointing the correct way, which is interesting. And we get into a pretty safe orbit. Of course, it is actually nighttime on the base, so we need to swap to it. We need to time warp over until it is daytime. Very nice. Kerbin, high up in the sky. And we can get ready to take this thing down. So, we'll get to the periapsis, we'll do some orbital manoeuvres, and that will all be well and good. I did say I was going to be using the ISSS, the International Subscriber Space Station, for all the warping purposes and everything, but to be honest, it takes quite a while to load up that craft. It's much quicker just to load up the surface base, and uh, also makes sense because we can actually see uh, what daylight is like from down there. So yes, you didn't. I don't know if you quite got the gist due to the sped up footage, but there's no moon base. <laughs> we had the same bug that we've had in previous episodes where there was no moon. I, I looked around and I couldn't see it for the life of me. And of course, you might say if you haven't seen the previous episode in question, you might say, oh, it's not there, but it doesn't matter, you can just go land on it. Mm, well, yeah, we tried that. And uh, the floor isn't actually there either, so it's not just a case of texturing, it's actually a case of the entire moon has disappeared. Here I think the analogy between the Death Star and the moon is quite appropriate. It's just gone away. <laughs> it's moved. It's moved to a different planet. Luckily it's not blowing up Kerbin, otherwise our space program will be at an end. Unless, unless we have our... Unless we have some sort of colony on another planet. Maybe I should work on that. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 
Bring it down, bring it down, burning retrograde. We have quite a lot of management to do on the surface, so it's a pretty fun episode, not just not just landing it like a few of the first ones was, or were. Bring it down, open up those landing gear, burning retrograde, and the markers disappear, so we are in, we are in 150 meters of our base. I have to say, Wimex84, who, Wimex84, I'm pretty sure I rem remember your name. I'm fairly certain you did a test pilot entry once. And I probably liked it. <laughs> and we are have landed. There we go. So yeah, the center of mass on the rover. That's what I was going to say. The center of mass on the cannon is pretty damn good. And there we have potentially a thumbnail. You know me. I love my cinematic poses. But none of that. Enough of that. Now we need to use this landing stage that I mentioned earlier. So what we're going to do is quick save to make sure nothing goes wrong and then open up the two legs I have there which is ineffective until we close them and we fall over with nothing being broken that's the advantages of having a lower acceleration due to surface gravity and we try to open up the legs to get back onto our on back on top but unfortunately unfortunately it ends up flipping over I wish you could perhaps adjust the speed of uh, how fast those legs open it might help but we'll try again, this time we'll actually be using the gyro, and we'll push up, and we'll burn burn away, because we're going to tip over if we don't. We were actually sitting on the rover slightly, so yeah. We might as well just go home now, there's no real reason not to, I suppose. We've landed the thing successfully, we know that much. So we'll burn, and uh, of course, seeing as we are pretty much directly below Kerbin, we can just burn towards 90 degrees, along the moon's retrograde vector. Technically it's just along the vector pointing retrograde, right? I think so. And we end up slowing down and we end up leaving the moon and deorbiting from this altitude to bring us down inside the atmosphere. And that's all well and good. Enter the atmosphere, we shall... we shall, you know, time warp, get down there. Is this the first one in the episode where we've actually successfully brought someone back? I think most of them... The only manned flight we've actually done was the Sky Crane for the Living Quarters. And we haven't even brought that guy back yet, he's just having a nice time in the Living Quarters all by himself. Open up the parachutes, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, and they will open very shortly. There we go. Yeah, so... So I put all the parachutes on the main command module because I don't care about saving the uh, the other parts. I'll just let them blow themselves up safely away from the command pod. And we'll land with a nice gentle touchdown. Back to the moon. Back to the moon to do all that management I talked about. So, uh, okay. First things first, we need to get rid of this launch platform thing, which is just in order to uh, bring the center of mass down. So, without further ado, let us take a look at this thing. The idea is that it shoots out behind us. So we want to not have brakes on, press it and BAM! <laughs> and all the bits go flying everywhere. I'm, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure they'll deorbit and, you know, die eventually. And we can start driving over towards our base, um, having successfully got rid of all that. I have to say the angle for this is pretty good. I think I'm not entirely sure, I need to do some testing, but I think that the actual current angle it's at at the moment... Man, that was a lot of uh, a lot of random words for no reason. There's another screenshot, <laughs> potentially. I think the angle the aerospikes are currently at is actually good enough for the, you know, the cannon itself. It's going to be a match between this one, how it is at the moment, or with both legs extended. The highest angle being just the first legs extended, the lowest angle being just the back legs, back legs extended, which probably will actually just point you directly down into the ground. So unless we want to bounce them into orbit or just, you know, massacre Kerbals, that works. Unless we want to do that, I think it's a match between the front legs, this one as it is, or both legs, because both legs is just in between the two. We'll open up everything 
and it bounces because of the force of those landing gear and we end up slightly off center. I'm just going to close the back ones and use the back wheels just to drag us around towards 90. Remembering that depending on what we want to dock it with actually, uh, depending on the ship in question, whether it's a space station we're trying to send the Kerbal up to or whether it's something else, we do want to get this thing completely pointed towards 90 degrees so uh, we don't have to do any in inclination changes and waste any precious EVA fuel. Let's switch over to our moon tractor. We'll leave behind that legged thing <laughs> and we're going to move over in this direction and just drive forwards a little because we're going to we're going to ditch the uh, what's it called the trough the scoop that's it, the scoop with its uh, sky crane flipper on the front. <laughs> Have you actually noticed the way this thing drives? It turns more than it should do, and those wheels do move laterally. Why is that, Harvey? Why is that? It's because the torque from the command module, when I press right and left, or, you know, A and D, it is actually just spinning the craft. <laughs> It's not turning the wheels to... Well, it is turning the wheels to turn, but we're not turning because of the wheels turning. So in circumstances when, we're, when we are reversing and we point in a certain direction, we actually don't end up driving how you'd expect us to. Uh, the torque pushes us in one way or another. Let's quick save, and of course, let's test this thing out. You didn't think we weren't going to test it out, did you? I mean, we have nothing in orbit currently to actually send the Kerbal up to, but, you know, this is a simulation. Of course, a simulation. Those things. So let's climb up the ladder, let's drop off onto the platform, walk forwards, turn ourselves around and try try do a bit of a dance to get into the center. Come on. You know what? Yeah, just point him towards the cannon. Let, his, let him view his doom. So we'll switch to the cannon, and we are ready. <laughs> Throttle up to max. Use the hotkey to turn the engines. Oh, get the cinem get the cinematics, get the cinematics. Turn the engines on and off, and there he goes on his suborbital trajectory, spinning madly. Ah. Yeah, this is why I was saying that I might want to use a more powerful engine. Is it? On paper, that trajectory, well, not even on paper, just, you know, visibly, the trajectory it launches the Kerbal onto doesn't seem particularly high. But you, you do have to remember, that is quite fast. He's travelling quite fast, and because it is exponential how much uh, the speed you get out when you put the fuel in, from when you accelerate, that is, uh, it does definitely help as much as it needs to, certainly. The cannon isn't too weak. That is just a fact. It is. It will. It does. It does work, and in fact, we shall see it work right now. So, as we get to the apoapsis, we can burn forwards. I actually end up somehow. Somehow, the guy ends up changing direction. So there we go. Yeah, he ends up pointing the wrong way. You fool! You fool! Generic Kerman. I don't know your name. Generic Kerman. That sounds like an epic name. Generic Kerman. You idiot! Why? Why did you turn around? Of course, the only way we can actually judge which way we're pointing is by the effect it has on our trajectory and on the direction we seem to be moving in. <laughs> so, there we go, we get into orbit and we circularise this thing at around 15 kilometres with almost 40% of our fuel left. If the thing we're trying to dock with is in a 15 kilometre orbit, which sounds reasonable, I say dock, I say, I mean rendezvous, if it's in a 15 kilometre orbit, that is more than enough to rendezvous with it. Um, and you might say, oh yeah, you can do most of the rendezvous with the actual craft. If it's a space station, that doesn't make sense. We just need good timing with the cannon and have it in a low enough orbit that we can use the EVA to do the rendezvous. And it won't take too much effort. I don't think. I don't think. So, what are we doing now? Well, the hangar is a bit defunct. And I've said that in order to minimize clutter. We do have like eight flights in our in our tracking station currently. Eight individual unique 
units here. So, and because I want all the rovers docked together for storage, I'm currently going to use that docking port on the back of our cannon, just to put all these things in a line and keep them together. Of course, being a silly me, uh, it barely makes any difference because I dropped the, <laughs> I dropped the uh, the scoop and that legged thing. So, I actually created two more flights in the process of freeing up two flights. But, none of the matter. It's the principle of the thing, I suppose. We'll get this... We'll get this car where it needs to be. And you'll notice it is driving differently, not using the torque that I described earlier. That's because I've switched it into docking mode after... Excuse me. After someone mentioned in the comments that the developers have said that you should use docking mode for the rovers, and it makes a lot of sense. I'm not entirely sure what the mappings are for docking mode, but it basically replaces RCS controls with WAS and WASD, which means that the standard, you know, rotational controls aren't WASD anymore. So we don't get that torque effect, and it's uh, it's definitely short story. Long story short, it's preferable for rovers. Now you may look at this and think it's not docking. What's going on? Testing has shown that with just a little bit of RCS, if we come out of docking mode, with just a little, little bit, and we can get that thing docked. And there we go. It is docked now. And, of course, hopefully the uh, the Moon Tractor has its docking port at the correct height. It should do. It is a rover after all, so they should be perfect. We'll bring this thing ground and dock it into its constituent place. And now, of course, as we near the end of the episode, it is time to decide what I want next. What do I want next as we dock that? Well, we have a cannon here. Hmm. We've put a cannon down onto the surface of our base. Where is it going? Into orbit. So I think it's probably time to put something into orbit. Nothing massive. I really don't want a big... I don't want to make a massive space station. Just a temporary place for things to happen in. I'm thinking at the moment, literally, just a central point that's got a habitation module in it, or a hitchhiker storage container. Some central point for docking all of our other bits too, with a habitation module. And that is the end of the video. Before I do end the video, there is one thing I want to say. I've joined a Minecraft server, which is an interesting move for me, seeing as I'm not making enough KSP videos. But, um... In my free time, whilst I'm waiting for things to render and things to upload, I've joined the Minecraft server. All the details you could possibly ever want for that are on the screen now. Uh, it's actually hosted by someone who watches the channel, which is quite nice. He contacted me saying, Hi, I've got a server if you want to join it. <laughs> and uh, yes, so if you want to play Minecraft with Harv, then you can join that server. There's a hundred slots on it, and currently I'm not sure what the active date the active base on it is. It's not massive, so there are quite a lot of slots free. But yes, that is all I have to say about that. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Moon Base. If you want to submit your own utilities, there is all that you need to know in the description. A link to the forum thread is provided. If you liked the video, please do like the video, and I shall see you all next time.